Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is Oil Rush. This is a naval RTS, supposedly mixed with a bit of tower defense, by a company called... God, can I get that name right? Probably not. I believe it's Unigine. And they created the Unigine engine, which is what this game is based on, which also was responsible for something which you might remember if you have any part of the benchmarking community or you've just read quite a few hardware reviews. They made a benchmark called Heaven, which is something that a lot of people have used to benchmark their graphics cards. They've now made a game using this engine, and what they've come up with is Oil Rush. So it's got a 16 mission campaign, it's got quick game and multiplayer. Sadly, multiplayer doesn't seem to have an awful lot of games going on. This is actually the first time I've clicked that list where even a single person has been hosting a game. So the population of this game is not particularly high right now. And then you've got quick game, which is a skirmish up against four AI opponents, potentially, and you've got 15 maps there. Now, 15 maps is a fairly impressive number, but I would like to point out that most of these maps consist of water. So designing 15 maps is not that tricky when most of your maps are pretty much dead space and oddly enough the fact that the maps are dead space is quite relevant to the game mechanics all right so we're gonna kick into the campaign i've played about an hour of this and of course this is the first impression series as you should well be aware by now i've been off the last couple of days just taking a break clearing my head so i've had a chance to actually play a little bit so I'll show you this mission. This mission is particularly irritating because it's one of those RTS missions where you have to keep a single unit alive, which is in itself rather annoying. It's ex actually extremely annoying based on the way that the movement works in this game. So let me try and explain it. You get a briefing there and it'll tell you what you've got. The Zeppelin right here, a unit which is actually not available in the multiplayer from what I've seen. It's not on the units list on the website. I have played no map that actually has anything that allows you to build a Zeppelin, but there are similar units available, so I don't think there's anything really wrong with that. And then you've got your two upgrades here, which can be researched. All right, let's go straight in and see what's going on. So, voice acting time. It's not exactly the best in the world. Commander, we've captured a Zeppelin. A pilot is alive and willing to cooperate. He will show us where the Raiders' base is located in exchange for his life in barrels of oil. It's been long since I've tried to spot their so-called new Venice in piles of garbage. We can't miss this chance. Go there and finish off Raiders. I am ready, sir. Yes. Where do I know a British guy from? I'm not 100% sure, but he sounds very, very similar. He wasn't the president in Fallout 3, was he? I don't know, it sounds very similar, but of course doesn't mean it's the same guy all right so the game is based around platforms these platforms do various things these for instance these ones right here are oil rigs they generate oil that is your sole resource aside from supply units which i don't really count as a resource and then you've got these which are various different kinds of platform that produce various different kinds of units these make angler boats these also make angler boats as it turns out and these make piranhas which are these little things right here we can have a look at them directly yes this might remind you just a little bit of water world you can get jet skis as your basic unit all right so the game is fairly simple in terms of what you have to do. We're about to be attacked here, so I can watch this area pretty much defend itself. In fact, watching the game do something itself is something that you should get used to if you're interested in playing this game, because the game mostly plays itself in that respect. You have no direct control over your units, so if I were to click on this, the only thing that I can do with these units is tell them to go to a different platform. That's it. That's the only thing I can do. They don't have any special abilities or anything like that, and they will just fight themselves, and there's no way to micromanage them. Like, for instance, that injured one, it's like, oh, maybe I can back that one off. You can't. You cannot individually move a single unit. So the interpretation of RTS slash tower defense really comes down to, well, it's very simplified in terms of its strategy element, and the tower defense element is based around it having towers. That really is about it. So I, I, it's not something I view as a particularly strong selling point. Right, we'll place down a couple more towers here. It's fairly simple. Each platform, except for oil rigs that can't actually be defended by towers at all, can have five towers. These towers can also be upgraded. Annoyingly enough, these towers can't be repaired. And certainly not at this stage of the campaign. There's no direct way to certainly click it and repair it. You can sell it and replace it. And suddenly the music gets louder for no apparent reason in the background. I'm not really sure why that is. But whatever the case, you can, like I said, sell it. And there is a repair boat, which is a very, very high-tier ability, which you don't get at this stage of the campaign. Now, you can unlock your abilities by earning experience points. 
Bear in mind, I've been in this mission for about four or five minutes. I now have enough points to unlock everything on the tree. Not a huge amount of progression there. Admittedly, each of these three bottom tier powers actually have three total. So if I wanted to vastly increase this one, for instance, I can decrease the cooldown, I can decrease the oil cost of it. And this is a weird bug that happens every time I research Demoralize, is that it, it's like it wants me to use it, and I can't seem to find a way to stop it from thinking that. You'll notice that it, it's, it's like selecting itself over and over again, and the only way I could stop it from doing that is just to throw the power out there. All right, so what I want to do here is to actually take an enemy platform. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the buttons down here, which will allow me to simply slide the units over from one platform to another. So a simple click there. If you also you slide your left mouse button between them, then what you'll get is multiple platforms all going to the same place. Which I, I think I pulled it off there, maybe not. Oh great, we're under attack here. So this is annoying, by the way, because I don't have any direct control here. The Zeppelin is getting shot to pieces. And the only way to get away from it is, of course, to move to a different platform. Yeah, have fun with that, because they will pursue you, and they will do a ton of damage to your Zeppelin, and you can't repair it. There's no way to do that. This mission in particular is annoying as hell, and in fact, it's the reason that I just tried to play the skirmish games instead. This whole lack of control is just mind-bogglingly frustrating. I could see what they're trying to do with it, in that they're trying to simplify it down to simple strategic decisions, like attack here, defend here. You could send 25% of your units, 50% or 100% by selecting these little buttons up to the top here. And then you can decide where to go. And in a multiplayer game, this is actually pretty cool because you can very easily transition through to defending or attacking various different areas. And micromanagement is reduced to a bare minimum, assuming that's what you want out of your game. Personally, I really would prefer some direct control of micromanagement. Oh, demoralizes up again. That means I've got to spend it for no apparent sodding reason. That might be useful because I'm actually attacking this area. Right, so we can send in more units from here. I don't want to send the Zeppelin. That's fine. You can not send the Zeppelin. You can just simply deselect it so that any unit you send over there doesn't contain the what the parts of the unit that you don't want so you do have some control in that respect but you can't just like ban box like select this unit attack you've got what's called cinematic camera view right here which does give you once again a more cinematic view of the battlefield which i suppose is nice for the company making this since they actually do want to license out the engine at some point and it's not a bad looking game certainly it's got some decent water effects certainly not the best looking game either but honestly, a cinematic view, you might as well have it on most of the time because you don't really benefit from not having it on. You can control, and in fact, you should be controlling this for the most part simply by using the minimap. Now, I'm going to quit out of this so that I can show you a proper full-on game skirmish mode because it's much more enjoyable to watch that than it is to watch the campaign. The campaign is generally fairly laborious and slowly paced. It's part tutorial, of course. I have a feeling that it was designed that way. I think if you're after single player, you're probably not going to enjoy the campaign too much. There are some pretty neat features of it, like the way that the terrain you can see in the background. You know, that's part of the campaign mission. You can see these Waterworld-style shanty cities, I suppose, built in this world where everything's been flooded out. And it's certainly got a nice aesthetic in that respect, and it's definitely not a bad looker either. But if we want to really look at how the game works, we should try a quick game. Now, what I'm going to do is I think I'll do a two-player. That's a siege one that's going to drag on for ages so we probably won't do that i think that we will maybe play rain what's that got helicopters planes yeah pretty much all of the things that you can imagine here so we're going to go for that one and it'll load in quite fast and then you start with a single platform and some units and then you go off and try and capture whatever and you want to try and move out as quick as possible i think what we'll do first is we can send some units over there and Really, we don't actually need to send all of the boats over to an oil rig because the chances are it's not defended. Some of these platforms will actually have NPC defenses that you have to overwhelm, usually towers. <laughs> I'll tell you what also annoys me, the fact that these guys just, they love to just skirt around the place. They don't want to directly go anywhere. That I think it's just because they, they wait for the others to catch up to them or something along those lines. I think that must be how it works. All right, cool. We've captured some oil. That's always nice. So we can start building defenses on our basic platform here, which is for piranhas. And I want to try and get an angler boat facility if possible. So we'll just send them in this direction. Once the game starts to really kick into pace and you're defending multiple platforms and you're diverting forces from place to place, it is pretty fun. It's definitely not as strategic as I would like. As I say, I don't feel that they've taken... 
the right messages really from uh, tower defense and from rts because as i said it it just lacks the micromanagement and control that you would expect from an rts i would have just preferred a straight up real-time strategy game where everything is based on the ocean i think that would be kind of neat i don't have a problem with that and you might think oh well that seems kind of boring not really consider that most rts's are usually air and ground What's wrong with getting rid of ground and replacing it with sea? So we just have air and sea. Is that a bad thing? I don't believe so. All right, so we've captured something there. We might want to move on to the heavy factory in the center here. And maybe, just maybe, I don't know if that's enough boats to go and check that out. I should probably just send one boat to scout. Admittedly, it's easy enough to pull them back. Once you've selected that, you can then just click backwards in order to try and get your boats away from it. Not too much of a problem. You can also tell them to return fleet, which is generally the easiest way. As you can see, you can select them there, but I can't tell them to move anywhere, so it doesn't really make all that much of a difference. What am I up against? Okay, two artillery piece, oh, artillery piece in the bunker, so that's going to be fairly resistant. I can actually get my anglers over there. I'm going to tell them all to rally over to the top here. This area is fairly secure, and obviously the hammerhead destroyed me as well now this is the full tech tree it's not particularly large but generally speaking you might want to dedicate to just one tree to get down to stuff like this that's the really one of the really powerful units you can bring in this each tree has a powerful unit of some sort in this case the unit is actually a nuclear bomb so if you want to go down this tree of just kind of pure firepower, you can do that this one allows you to bring a submarine in this allows you to bring a converter plane which is a very large gunship if I recall correctly, one of these also gives a repair boat as well. Can't quite remember which one that is. I probably skipped over it at some point. Yeah, that's the one. That's the unique unit for that. But yeah, pick whatever you kind of feel is the best option, I think, in that respect. All right. Do I need to defend the shipyard? Well, I could set up a couple of turrets. I've got plenty to actually deal with that. I'm going to put up a anti-air there as well so i can get the angler boats off there right, how many units do i have here what have i got an angler boat and three piranha it's not enough i'm gonna send the other angler boats over here nice and slowly and that is how they will move pretty damn slowly they sort of saunter over to where they feel like they need to be they take the scenic route i suppose all right fantastic so we've got points let's which route shall we go down i think we'll go down this one because i want to get the converter plane out Flat unit speed upcrease, upcrease. That's not even a word. Increase. Thank you very much. And then you've got these two. Can I do that? That's a passive unit speed increase. Yeah, let's, let's just go down a passive tree for the moment. All right. That's 10 piranha, three angler boats. That should be enough to take this stingray production facility. Then I'll start to get helicopters. Those, the helicopters are generally more responsive, as are the planes, because they don't have to take standard sea routes in order to get there. So they just kind of fly straight there without too much of a problem. Let's send the units over there as well and now this this is fully towered up so i don't really see any need to have anything there so let's go and try and take a second angler boat facility sounds like a plan now go back to cinematic camera view because again there's no real control here so it doesn't really matter all that much Might as well just brawl our way through there and gain control very nice all right what's the oil like so i've got two oil facilities he's got two oil facilities my opponent is over there i haven't actually met up with him as of yet i've just run into a bunch of npcs turns out there's an artillery cannon there and a bunker so i don't want to just be sending angler boats over there they tend to get shot to pieces very very easily I'm taking some damage from that tower over there as well so we might want to gather a new set of forces find out what's there okay four piranha we can have them move over in this direction we don't need to be defending the oil rig just yet. And we've got the capture there. What I do like, by the way, is this little bar. It, it actually incorporates elements of the UI into the world. That will actually indicate how captured that an area actually is. The thing is, it doesn't really make a lot of sense because nothing else is integrated in the UI that way. So I'm not really sure why it's there. Or I suppose to say integrated into the UI. It's actually outside of the UI, integrated into the world. An element of the UI that could just be part of the game user interface but actually is part of the world it's, it kind of makes me scratch my head a little bit as to why it would be that way okay we're going to increase production speed on there and as you'll notice the fleet is on its way over we can have a little cinematic view there there's my stingray helicopter which seems to be doing a fairly decent job of doing a significant amount of damage but it will be shot out of the sky doesn't really matter units don't actually cost anything it's only production speed you need to concern yourself with all right five jet skis two angler boats heading in this direction and we should have the cap on that momentarily as you can see that rising up there and that gets me a few more points and you know it's really as simple as that honestly 
I grab one and sabotage and then save up for the converti plane, I think. Once again, this weird bug that's forcing me to use sabotage. I don't know why that is. I don't actually have a clue as to why it would be the case. So, like I said, it just seems like it's a bug that needs to be ironed out one way or the other. Just some of the abilities seem to want to trigger themselves at every possible opportunity. All right, cool. We should finally have control of this heavy factory once this bunker is down, which should be quite shortly, and that will give us hammerheads. There isn't a large unit variety in this game, honestly. There's just not a large variety of anything, really. Some of the variety you'll see will be in a campaign, and you won't be able to use it in the multiplayer. It does mean that, as far as I can tell, the game seems pretty well balanced in terms of what you have available to you, but it does run the risk of getting fairly dull fairly fast. Like, there aren't really many choices to make in terms of the towers there, because your chances are you're going to want two, two, and one, because you don't know what's going to attack you. Your opponent probably has access to pretty much everything, and unless that is not the case, then you might as well just go for it. Build everything you can. All right, we're moving over in the direction of this oil storage facility right there, which will add oil storage capacity. That's fairly important. I think what I'm going to do is also boost production over here. This is nicely sorted out. There's a single piranha. This is irritating as well, I might add. You can just capture a unit... A building, an oil building specifically, with a single unit. Admittedly, there's nothing stopping you then using a single boat in order to defend it either, so it's not too shabby. It's a mild annoyance, if anything. Alright, cool. I've got the oil storage in the center right there. We're going to rally all of our troops in this direction. This is well defended. Might even be able to get a couple of upgrades on the towers there to make it a little bit more unpleasant. This guy's barely attacked me up to this point. I say this guy, he's actually the AI. All right, well, let's make things a bit more unpleasant. We've got to push in on the heavy factory here with our... The, the main... Con what the? Oh, God. Okay, this is where we don't want to be. You know... Why? Get, leave! Don't... Oh, okay. Okay, that didn't really miss at all. Well, that was a nuclear weapon. Annoyingly enough, I don't think I got my fleet out there in time because it decided it wanted to select an ability again, which is... Infuriating. I don't know why it did that, and now there's really no chance of me capturing that because I just lost half my fleet as I tried to desperately pull back. Uh, oh, well. Can I get my converti plane yet? No, I need an additional experience point, so let's send everything we've got over in this direction. I say the user interface and the control method is elegant but simplistic, which is a bit of a problem. This is why I think that a game like this would be very, very suited to touchscreen controls because it's like you drag from one to the other. It's like... You know, remember what I said when I did a little live WTF is of a game called Blue Libra, and that actually ended up on iPad and iPhone as well? This is the same kind of principle here. Sliding from one to another, this makes perfect sense to work on a touch-based device. As it turns out, this game is out for PC, Mac, and Linux, and it was a simultaneous release, so it's kind of intriguing. All right, what does it want me to do now? It's deselected everything okay i guess i'm summoning a plane there wow it's doing the same thing again this is weird i don't really know why it's doing that but yeah that's a big stonking manta ray so we can send everything in this direction i think right now let's just send everything we've got at it so if i were to draw a conclusion on this game at the moment it's that i think it could be pretty fun in multiplayer oh i right i realize why i didn't send anything over there because i didn't have that change I, I always forget to change it back to 100 percent so i'm actually not moving my entire fleet which is why i died to the nuke oh well that's actually my fault admittedly that bug where everything's automatically selecting is a little bit curious i'm not sure why it's doing that oh as it turns out i forgot to build defenses on there and it turns out my opponent knows it knows i'm gonna have to divert reinforcements over here immediately should be easy enough to do that i can divert the helicopters and then in the meantime have a look at why does it do that? Why? What has it got selected? It won't even let me actually increase production on the heavy factory. Is this sabotage it's got selected? I guess it is. All right, that's that's wonderful. Anyway, as I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted, the strategy element is fairly simplistic to the point where I have a feeling it could get very, very boring if you're just playing single player. In multiplayer, I think there's a lot of potential for cr crazy cool maneuvers and things like that, and outflanking your opponent, outsmarting your opponent. That's cool. There's nothing really wrong with that per se, but as I said, I think they learned the wrong lessons from RTS and Tower Defense. 
they they made the game too simplistic get the hell out of there now leave 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 they made the game too simplistic and i think that that might affect its lasting appeal somewhat honestly I would love to see a full-on RTS based in this world where you're just building buildings and places that you want as opposed to having all of the combat exist around these platforms. And when I say that something... It has a lot of dead space in it, which is what I'd view this game as. Like, the ocean areas are pretty much dead space. Nothing happens there. If one fleet runs into another fleet on the way, then they'll fight, of course. But the actual game world is 80% non-issue and only 20% of it actually matters because all of the fighting and all of the rallying of units happens around towers in a fairly automatic way you just send your units to one tower then then patrol the tower until it's time to move out to a different tower and so on and so forth so I don't necessarily think that that's the best way of doing things and as a result the game seems fairly simplistic if I were to draw a conclusion on it I would say that it does have its moments and it's definitely got its fun points and I think that multiplayer is most likely going to be its strong point here. But the game is, at the moment, merely okay. It's me Is it okay to say that now? Is I don't know. Is, is that an acceptable thing to say in modern game coverage? Is it just okay to say, it's okay, it's average, it doesn't really innovate all that much, it takes ideas from two different genres, but doesn't really execute either of them all that well. But the whole is fairly enjoyable. It's average, it's run-of-the-mill, it's par the course. You'll probably have some fun with it, but I am hesitant to wholeheartedly recommend it because it does, it lacks a certain something. Nothing in this game stands out to me as being exceptional. It's merely decent. It plays pretty well. And you know what? That might be okay for you. If the theme really is something that you're interested in, you actually have a bunch of friends that you could play multiplayer with, then... Yeah, a simplified RTS tower defense with a naval theme. You might get some enjoyment out of it, certainly. Personally, I don't think I'm going to be revisiting all that much. I might play a multiplayer game here and there, but while I think this game actually had some real promise, I don't think it executed it in a truly sensational fashion. It's definitely functional. It works pretty well. It seems to accomplish what it's aiming for based on the engine and control method that it has, but the overall result is not as satisfying as I would like. Oil Rush, ladies and gentlemen, currently available on any good digital distribution platform. Steam's got it for 10% off, so I believe that's the best deal at the moment for £11.69 or $18 or around €13 Euros or so. Standard price is 20 bucks for this title, which I feel might be a little bit high, honestly. I, I think if it was 10 I would have certainly had less trepidations recommending it, but for $20 I'd perhaps expect a bit more longevity than I'm not really getting here. I don't know if this game is going to give you any more than a few hours of fun unless you really get into the multiplayer side of things at the moment the community for multiplayer is pretty much dead so you're going to have to rely on knowing people that actually own this game ladies and gentlemen my name is total biscuit having a look at oil rush and i'll see you next time